All right, so today we will be turning a website into an app using the service web to -app .design. You'll already see I have the page open here already and you'll find the link to it in the description. And the website that we want to convert into an app today is Google's Project Sunroof, which shows you how much you could benefit from installing solar panels on your roof and how many people in your area have installed solar panels already. We think it's a cool project, so let's see how that would look like as an app. First of all, let's uh, scroll down a bit here. Okay, so this is what the page looks like. And see how it looks like on a phone, in this case on an iPhone XR. It's mobile optimized. And we have a menu here. All right, now let's turn that into an app. You can see on webtap.design, it's asking us to enter the URL of the website that we want to convert. We just copy that, paste it in here, and click Get Your App. Then we can select an app name. We'll say Project Sunroof, and then enter our email. Okay, then we continue, and then we can already start configuring our app. So, as a first step, we are asked to upload an app icon. Open the file selection and select our logo, for example. In this case, we get a warning um, that the image is quite small, because it is smaller than the recommended re resolution of 1024 by 1024 pixels. In this case, it's quite close, and I've already checked the logo is still very sharp, um, so we'll stick to it anyways. But it's recommended to use a high resolution image. Okay, now we can configure the background color for the logo. So for example, I could use red, but that doesn't look too great, of course. So I'll stick to the white, okay, and we can also enlarge it a bit or make it smaller. Um, let's go for this size, it fits neatly into the square and the round preview of the app icon, so it should look good on all devices like this. So now we can click Save Changes to move on to the next step. The next step is the launch screen screen is shown when you start the app on your device. We'll see this for a couple of seconds while the app is loading. We could either use a different uh, image here if we have one, or also use the same image that we used in the app icon, like it is the default here. Um, in this case, we'll stick to this one, I think. It's quite fitting. And once again, we could modify the color here. And once again, we can save it. Now we can select the app layout. Here we have two options. At the moment you can see the draw menu layout. So you can see we have an app bar at the top here and a side menu that can be opened where we have menu items. The alternative is using the just website layout and you can see it looks exactly like our website in the mobile layout. The disadvantage of the Just Website layout is that it often causes problems when trying to publish apps with this layout in the Apple App Store. So it's recommended to use the Draw menu layout, and in this case it's not a big deal, because the website already looks quite similar to the Draw menu layout. So you can see we have a header here that looks like the app bar, and we also have a side menu like the Draw menu. So what we'll be doing then is hiding this header in the app and adding these menu items to the drawer in here. Alright, so let's stick to the draw menu and save that. And now we get to customizing the colors of our app layout. So the first one is the app bar accent color and it's used in this loading indicator that is shown while the app uh, is loading a new page on the website. 
you have a couple of different colors. They also use a bit of the blue, but the most common color they use is this orange. So why not also use this orange? Okay, so I've looked up the color now. And of course, um, you might already know your color code for your um, brand's colors. And I've entered it here. We have exactly that color that we want. So now we have the orange and it matches the website nicely. For the app bar, we can see the website's header, which we are trying to replicate, is also white, so we can leave the app bar color as it is. And maybe we want to use a bit more of a gray font, like we have on the website here. So why not make this a tiny bit lighter? Like this, okay? So we can save that now. And now we get to the draw menu screen. As you can see, it's already pre configured with the colors that we picked on the previous page. And I think it already looks quite good. So, um, once again, we have some accent colors that get used in the menu here. For example, if we select a menu item, we have text colors. Um, that are used on the menu item, etc. And I think we can already stick to the defaults here. Um, could modify uh, this a bit more. For example, we can make the raw background transparent so we can see it. Um, that's the website shine through a bit now. Um, yeah, why not? That's a nice effect, I guess. And for the drawer header, instead of having the app icon and the app name here, you can also just upload an image. And why not upload our logo again? Because it's quite wide, so I think it fits really well in here. Well, in this case, maybe we want to have the background white here, actually, so it's uh, more legible. Yeah, how about that? I think that's pretty neat. Um, we can also enable a couple of extra menu items. Here's the share menu item. If a user clicks that, he can share the current URL uh, via email, WhatsApp, Facebook, or whatever uh, other apps he has installed on his device. That might be interesting. And we also have to show externally menu item. And with this, the page that is opened in the app can be opened in a browser instead. I don't think we need that in this app, so let's disable it and save the change. So here we can configure um, colors that are used on some other screens, for example, a settings screen. But everything is very legible here, and the colors match the brand of the website, the branding. Um, so let's stick to it and keep it as it is. Move to the next step. We are asked about the language of our website. It's English, so we can stick to the default here. Now um, we get to permission settings. So for example, if our website had a file upload where users could upload images, then we would need to enable this checkbox here because this will then allow the end user to take a picture with their camera and directly upload that instead of just uploading saved images. And as you might know, uh, apps need to request permission before they can access the camera. So we would need to enter permission texts here. But uh, we don't have a file upload on that website here, so no need to do that. Okay, same thing about location access. If they had that, we could enable this option, and then uh, we would once again get this uh, prompt to allow location access, and we need to write a permission string for that as well, of course. All right.
Same for tracking, but this applies to almost no apps except uh, the really data hungry ones like Facebook or something. Now we get to the screenshots. So as you might know, in the App Store and the Play Store, you need to upload screenshots. And these screenshots will be shown to users before downloading your app. So for example, I've opened the YouTube app here now um, in the Play Store. And you can see we have a couple of example screenshots in here. And on this page, you can let us know which pages you want a screenshot of. So for example, if you want a screenshot of your app showing this home page, then you add this URL to the list of URLs to screenshot. And then we will take a screenshot of your app showing this page, and then you can upload the screenshot to your Google Play Store and Apple App Store listing. All right. So this list is already populated with a couple of example URLs. We find the most popular pages from your website here. And that's how we find those. So these are usually already a pretty good default. Um, so we can keep those in this case. For example, if we want to remove one, we just click remove. Or if we want to add one, we would add the URL in here. Okay, and yeah, you need at least uh, three and can have up to eight because those are the limits set by the apps. Okay, now we have the last step already, the testing information. So if your website requires users to log in before they can use most parts of your website, then please provide an example account here so we can use that example account to log in and test your app, make sure everything is working fine. In this case, the website can be used without an account, so we don't need to provide a test account here and just click Save Changes. Okay, and then we get sent to the checkout page. There we can make our payment after choosing our uh, preferred subscription, we can switch between monthly and yearly billing. And then we can select a package that suits our website. Uh, if we have a lot of users, the small package might not be enough because it allows just 1000 monthly active users. That's measured like this, you can see it in this info box. Basically, it's how many unique devices can open your app in one month. So if one person opens your app 10 times, that still counts as one user. So that's no problem there. And of course, some features like push notifications are only available in the medium and the bigger plans. So let's use the medium plan in this case. All right, I've made my payment now. Now I'll just be patient and wait for an email from the web to app team. And there we will be able to look at a preview of our app. All right, so I've just received an email with the link to the preview of our app. So I've opened the page now and try out the app. Yeah, so you can see we have the app bar here that we configured, the website, and it looks exactly like the mobile world. The website. Our menu, just like we've configured, logo at the top, transparent background, and the menu items. So let's compare it to the Website once again, mobile layout. So you have its header and you have the menu items. See, it's the exact same menu items. So 
Web-tab.design has configured that for us and also made sure that we don't have two headers at the top here, so just the app bar. That's what I meant at, in the beginning, that this website has a layout that's quite similar to the draw menu layout, so that's why, we're, why we picked it. Open that page. Installation process. Yeah. All right. And then I think that looks pretty good. And I can click button here. And we'll start the app publishing process. But that's uh, something for another video, I'd say. So this doesn't get too long. But basically what will happen is web to app prepares some more things in the background. Then these timeline items down here get unlocked. And these are basically guides showing you how to publish your app in the Play Store, how to set up the Apple developer account, and then how to publish your app in the Apple App Store. So those guides lead you through the entire app publishing process and if you need any help web to app team is always there to support you okay i hope this video helped you out and hope that you decide to create an app with web to app that design